Today, I'm excited to be joined by one of my Inner Circle members, Chris Garvey. Chris is the director of CG Joinery and Building, a building contractor based in the Northeast. Now, Chris has got a remarkable and an inspiring journey to success. Not only has he built, grown and scaled his business by 320%, but he's completely reprogrammed his entire mindset and physiology. And a challenge from his daughter has now led him to inspiring thousands of children to change their mindsets and build a growth mindset by becoming the author of two fantastic best-selling books. So Chris, welcome to the show. Hi Craig, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for joining us. And I know for sure that you've got some very valuable information that you're going to be sharing with us today. Now, Chris, the last two years of your life have been literally life transforming. The way in which you've reprogrammed your entire mindset is remarkable. And on top of that, you've grown your business. You've transformed your own life. You're transforming other people's lives. And on top of all that, you've published two books and become a best-selling author, which is incredible. So what I'd like to do is explore how you've achieved so much in such a short space of time, because normally this would probably take a normal person a decade plus at best. So what I want to do is I want to explore exactly how you've done it. But before we go there, Chris, do you just want to take a minute to introduce yourself and your business. Yeah, certainly. So my name's Chris Garvey. I have a construction company based in Newcastle upon Tyne. Um, I also invest in property and I have two beautiful young children and a partner. And I also have just launched a new business, which is focused on helping create a positive mindset within children. Yeah, amazing. And that, um, you know, we're gonna explore that along this journey. So Chris, take us back then to right at the beginning of your journey. Why did you set your business up in the first place? What were the purpose behind it? Great question. And it was always something that I wanted to do. Um, but at the time I didn't have a very good mindset and I always found an excuse not to do it, which was either, I kind of guarantee I'll get the work, I've got bills to pay, what if I don't make any money, what if I don't get any clients? So there was always an excuse not to. Um, 2017, something in my life happened. It was, at the time, a big ordeal for me to deal with. I, I split up with my partner at the time. We both lived together, had both our children together. And that was probably the turning point in my life. And what I thought at that moment was the worst thing that could possibly happen to me ended up being the best thing that could possibly happen to me because I then found myself with my back against the wall. And what I mean by that is when we split up, I worked for a company and I want to share custody of my children, my children and my life, like literally give me purpose in life. And I couldn't have imagined life without them. And that was one of the biggest things I was having to deal with at the time is figuring out that. So I said, I want to share custody. She said that because I have a full-time job and I kind of dictate my hours, that it would be impossible. So I literally quit my job <laughs> like overnight. So I went from being scared to set up a business for a million different reasons to setting up a business without actually doing any marketing, without actually having any money, without having any van, very limited tools. I literally had nothing. And I mean nothing. And but the bigger the thing for me at the time was there was something greater there for me. So my worry about finding work wasn't even in my mind. My mindset shifted to, I want my kids. I want to see my kids. I'm going to have to make this work. And that was my sole focus. So I literally quit my job overnight, rang every designer, architect that I could think of and said, I've gone on my own. Um, have you got any work? And so, yeah, it was literally something that, something quite bad that happened in my life forced me into a corner and that's where the journey started 
So, so really, I mean, I'm sorry to hear, you know, about them personal circumstances, but you started your business for, for your kids, really, didn't you? So you could get yeah. full custody of your kids. Oh, not yeah. full custody, shared custody. Shared custody, yeah. 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 So, so you set your business up, you didn't have anything. No. So what type of work did you start off by doing? So in the very, for like the first, like I'd say for the first few months, it was a case of small joinery jobs. Like the initial jobs were like doors, skirtings, architecture, literally anything. I'm quite handy with a, with a different trade. So anything I could actually get my hands on, I was doing, I had no choice. I must have been looking at like dozens of jobs through the week and just to try and win like an hour or half a day's work or a day's work, just anything at that time I was grasping at. So initially it started off with just small, small jobs because I didn't have a reputation. So I was cheap. I was new. My prices were a lot lower than everybody else's. I was having to undercut other people to win the work because I was obviously, I didn't really have much of a choice at that time. Okay. So what were, what were the type of job that sort of like catalyst your your career then as somebody so, that was self-employed what what actually happened because you didn't continue to just fit skirting boards and architraves no, and jobs, no, did you? no and again um i kind of grew as 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 time went on and i went from doing small jobs and then probably my first biggest or biggest job was doing a, a renovation in a restaurant in newcastle um that was a very challenging project and a one which because the restaurant didn't want to shut it, it and close its doors, it meant that I'd have to go in and work through the nights, which was a very, very challenging project. And at the time, a project which I kind of wish I'd never taken on. Yeah, I think we've all taken projects on like that that we didn't want to take on, did we? Okay, yeah. so how did that affect how did that affect you then? Because if you if you you know, from what I'm hearing you saying, you set up your business to get shared custody, but now you're having to work through nights. I take it you're sleeping all day. So how did you get to see your kids or did it not work like that? It didn't work like that. So that job, um, basically I was going in at about, it, it changed, but roughly about midnight. Um, sometimes maybe it's about one o'clock in the morning because they didn't shuttle 10, 11-ish. Um, and then I had to be, done and tidied up and out of there by eight o'clock as they had the cleaners coming in and they wanted to set up because they were open pretty much day and night so what i found was i was going in through the night and you're not really getting a lot done you're on your own you're trying to get stuff done and before you know it, you're tidying up ready for them coming in because you, you, you know there can't be dust anywhere and i was having to sheet a lot of stuff off and then take all the sheets back out and it was and and so then i wasn't really earning that much money really even though the price at the time for me was good. It was being able to actually spend the time on the job to generate the income. So I then decided that stupidly, oh, I know, I'll do the odd job through the day. So I was then leaving there and going to do other jobs through the day. And that escalated like anything does if you don't keep control of it. And then I, before I knew it, I was actually working from 12, 1 o'clock, 12 at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, through at about 8 at the restaurant. Then I'd go do other jobs, which then ended up being a full day. Then I had to look at jobs. I had to price jobs. So not only was I struggling to – I was still getting my kids from school, but then I was having to take them home. Um, I'd got with another partner at this time. She was living with me, so she was watching them while I went back out to go and look at jobs and stuff. And then, So the whole I want to set up my business to spend time with my kids wasn't really – working but yeah i was getting them from school because i had to and um, but then i was kind of palming them to my partner or asking my mom and dad at the time if they could watch them and what the the, the worst thing about that project was is i was deriving depriving myself of sleep and i ended up in a very very dark place after about i'd say about six seven weeks i was probably only sleeping two or three hours a night and i was working really hard like when you say it working 24 hours a day I was practically doing that and and at that time I ended up in a, probably the, the worst place I've been in ever mentally was there and I literally wanted to just give up I was at a point where I was like even looking at jobs I was like I can't actually go on doing this anymore yeah I mean I mean run we all know that running a business as tough as it is we are doing ghost shift through night and then working through day I mean I understand why you were doing that you were doing it you know, for your, for your kids at the end of the day. 
Okay, so you you you've hit a bit of a low point. So mm -hmm. what happened next then? Where did this transformation come from into this mindset that we see you doing today? What happened next? So what happened was I I finished the project. Basically, I was having a lot of negative thoughts at the time. And then I looked at my kids and I was like, well, I don't have any option here. I can't quit. I literally cannot quit. Because if I quit, then I'm not going to see my, my children. So again, they played a, a, a pivotal role at the time in, in for me because it, it made my mindset be, well, I'm going to have to make this work. And at the time, I kind of said to myself, you're going to have to sort yourself out here, kind of get on with it. And to be fair, I think what I, the term I was using at the time was you're going to have to man up here and get on with it and do what needs to be done so you can see your kids. And my mindset started shifting then. And, and also after I overcame that project and I managed to get it across the line, started kind of coming across um little bits and different things um books podcasts um influencers about mindset and it wasn't something i knew about at the time like the power of a growth and positive mindset and what a fixed and negative mindset was it's not something that you're taught in schools it's not some but something that many people know i think if you're in business you're probably more inclined to know about it or you'll come across it but if you're not, I don't think many people kind of understand it. And and then I started going down this rabbit hole of of personal development and, and the power of a positive mindset. And it was literally just after that project. And after that project, after I overcame it, that I realized that mentally I became stronger because at a time in my life where I was in a really bad place, I overcame it and I actually mentally felt stronger for it. And I think David Goggins says it best when he says that you build calluses on your mind. When you go through challenges and you overcome them, you're just building calluses. So the next time you can you can handle a bigger problem in your life or a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I love David Goggins. He's an absolute mm. machine, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's an absolute yeah. beast. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah so just um... to give us some context then around this 2017-18 time then, Chris, You've done, you know, you, you've, you've moved on from doing little small jobs to get you going. You're taking yeah. on the bigger jobs like the refurb jobs, like the yeah. uh, restaurant. To give us some context, what what sort of like turnover or profit margins, if you were making any, where are you? What what size are you at this point? Um, so I think at about, it was about 2019, I was about 107 turnover of a profit of about 2200 yeah okay so turn over 107 grand you've gone that registered and you've got i mean 2200 quid's not a lot of profit is it it's you know no. it's just over two percent in it on 100 grand it's it's not yeah. a lot at all no. no okay so so now you've got into personal development you're listening to goggins you're getting yourself fired up you know that you can overcome situations is is this around the same time as that you apply to join my inner circle yeah so basically once i started understanding the power of of mindset and the power of personal development well that's um trying to gain more knowledge in in an area um or trying to become like a stronger version of yourself i realized that in order for me to grow my business because let's face it i didn't get into business because I wanted to be a businessman. I got into business because at the time, although I wanted to be a businessman and I wanted to be entrepreneurial, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't go to school or university and learn about business. I became a carpenter and a good one and and then set up a business. So I was kind of winging it basically, which I was. And I think most people might not want to admit it, but I think a lot of people do wing it. You set it up. You've got no overheads to begin with, so it's easy to understand your, your your cash flow and what's coming in and what's going out. But then I got to a point where, because I was learning about personal development, I realized that I was going to have to start looking and gain help on how to actually run a business and, and the ins and outs of a business. And that's kind of where I came across you. It was you I came across originally, and then I came across you in a circle. So I applied for the inner circle because at the time, I thought it was something that would help me massively within within my business. Yeah. And, you know, that, that would have been July 2022 when you started in a circle. But, yes. you know, to be fair, though, Chris, when you started in a circle, 
you don't because you'd already been invested into your mindset. Yeah, I genuinely believe that when you came into that process, you'd sort of like almost got, you were a step ahead of some people that joined my inner circle. And the fact that you'd already worked on your mindset. And as you know, I, I, you know, I'm massive on mindset and personal development myself. Yeah. And therefore, I, w I just want to understand a little bit more about what happened on the inner circle with mindset and personal development, given the fact that you're already into it. So how did that help you because you're already doing it and month number one on my inner circle where we spend the entire month is on mindset and personal development so what did you learn new what did you what did you take away from that first month and what did you implement to make your mindset even stronger than it was i think yes i was in the mindset and i was i was actively doing things and looking into it but what i learned on the other circle i kind of up my game a little bit because i realized that other people were doing this but on a daily basis like literally daily whether it was listening to podcasts or listening to some kind of motivational speech or just 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 having working on it daily and i wasn't working on it daily i was looking into it and i understood I understood it, but I wasn't actively doing it every day. And when I seen that you were doing it every day and you were encouraging everybody else to do it every day, I was like, oh, right, I really I need to up my game here. Like, it's, I realized the power in, 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 in working on your mindset daily, not just like ad hoc, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even now, even now, I'll work on my mindset every day. I'll start my day in a positive way and make sure that before I start the day, I'm in a positive state of mind so that. I can challenge the day head on. Whereas back then I wasn't doing that. So even though I was working on my mindset, I still had a lot to work on, if that makes sense. I understood it and I was looking at it, but the inner circle opened my eyes to, to different things. And to be fair, you, you recommended some good books in there and some good people to listen to. And what I actually realized was what I started doing quite a bit was looking at some of the people you were listening to. And even if I was just listening to some, some short reels about that, that, the, that they were on, even like an, a minute of listening to something motivational is really powerful. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of, it, it, it inspired me to up my game basically. Yeah. And, and we have got to up as game, but I think the sad reality is a lot of the times Chris is, and you now know this is, as running a business can sometimes beat us down. And I don't mm. necessarily always mean we at rock bottom are always on our knees, but it, it can be hard work. And all that overwhelming feeling and that anxiety and all that pressure can sometimes knock the wind out of a sail. So we do lose that motivation. And I'll be the first yeah. to admit that years ago, I'd fell out of love with my business loads of times and had to rekindle it. And I think you touching on that motivation is something that I believe everybody needs. Because as you know, what I teach is you can't have education without motivation and you can't have the motivation without the education. You need both. Mm -hmm. So by investing into learning new knowledge, which is what you were doing on Inner Circle, yeah. but then getting yourself fired up and motivated to take action on what you're learning, is is part of the process because if we're not fired up and motivated we're never going to take action on what we're learning likewise you can't be motivated and be but not learning new knowledge because all you'll do is call yourself up like a, a a spring of energy and because you're not learning anything new you're just like rushing around like a like a lunatic you've got all this energy but you're not spending it on anything because you're not learning new knowledge so it goes yeah. hand in glove doesn't it Oh, hundred percent. And obviously you'll know this very well because you've been in a very similar position to me as in you had your own construction business, but in the construction industry, I'm, I have to problem solve daily. I have headaches to come over daily, almost like it's never ending. It is never ending. And, and, and it actually, it's quite, it's, it's been in the construction industry. It's probably quite good for your mindset because it learns you to adapt and over, it learns you to overcome. It, it, learn, it teaches you to problem solve. You've got to persevere and be resilient because there's so many unknown factors that can come into play, whether that's subcontractors letting you down or materials 
skyrocketing like they did through through covid when you're mid project and all of a sudden you've priced for for one element and they've shot like there's so many moving parts in there and you'll know what it's like and that can become quite a, a daunting industry to be in especially if you haven't got the mindset for it and also i think one of the big things in, in our industry in that industry in particular is having respect and gaining the respect of others because if you don't people will quite typically start taking the mick and when that happens that's when your projects start going south and timelines start getting missed so it's uh well you know craig it's an interesting industry to be in it really is <laughs> do you know what you know like like you've just touched on that chris and and i might upset a few people saying this but it, it's got to be said i don't know of many industries as a whole that's as negative as mm -hmm. what the construction industry is it just mm -hmm. seems to be this fuck it attitude do you know yeah. what i mean you know even when i were an apprentice all them years ago when i started back in 1987 as an apprentice it's an odd tough ass industry where everybody seems to want to be sort of like you, you know look at me i'm mr big and all this lot and that negative attitude just rubs off and then it rubs off on your apprentices and then they come through a new generation and a lot of it is is what I call this fuck it attitude generation, where mm -hmm. it's just a negative, toxic environment, particularly on sites, you know, on big sites. No one talks to each other. Everybody's slagging each other off. Everybody's having a pop at each other behind the back and slagging everybody else's work off. You know, why, why does this happen in, in our industry? It, it's beyond me, which is why I'm saying if people start developing themselves, yeah. and we can take ourselves out of that sort of like culture and we create a new culture and reprogram ourselves to act and behave in a different way not only do we become a better person but the people that we surround ourselves with that influence rubs off on them doesn't it 100 percent. and one of the massive things i've learned through um working on my mindset is i always look at myself like and i think, I think that's the problem with the industry everybody's quick to point fingers like it's not my fault it, it's his fault or it's their fault or i'll get i might get a phone call and say there's a massive problem there's a massive problem we can't do this and i might look just calm down there'll be a solution just calm down like i know what you mean it's like that negativity like all of the time and like if anything happens now i'll always look at myself first and say like is there something that i could have done better in that but i'll hold myself accountable and i think when you start learning the power of mindset that's one of the first things you do is you you look at yourself you don't blame other people you look at what you could have done in that particular instance to it but most people in that industry don't like i'm very particular who i employ and who, which subcontractors i use for that particular reason and i try and i try and make a positive kind of environment and i mean i'll always take the lads and we a lot of me and the lads actually do golfing quite a lot together and we've got a real good relationship so it's always quite a positive environment but i have been on sites where it's not like that and i'm not actually surprised that mental health in the industry is so big because i've been on sites and i'm just like this is mental like what is wrong with everybody do you know and and and, and it is a big problem within the industry and i definitely i don't like so i think negativity is is i hate negativity so i've i've cut a lot of people out of my life and if anybody's in my life that is negative at all i just cut ties and i do that for my own mental health because you know what it's like it's negativity it's it's it, it it can bring you down and if you're on site and everybody's being negative then like that's going to be the environment and the culture isn't it and you're going to go there and you're going to be i hate this i hate this work and and it is a big problem within the industry and 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 it's something does need to change if if we're going to kind of attack the mental health issues that's within the industry because i think it's probably one of the biggest industries for mental health problems yeah yeah absolutely so we worked on mindset right yeah which which obviously puts you in a good position to to grow your business yeah what 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 else did do you feel as though we worked on on inner circle that benefited you in your business probably the most powerful um lesson that i learned on the inner circle and again very naive of myself was not knowing my numbers within the business so i remember you asking asking us if we knew our numbers as in what we need just to put the lights on and when you start a business off you kind of you do because you don't have any, any overhead so it's pretty easy to know but as your business grows obviously your overhead's growing i was like i remember sitting there thinking i don't actually know i mean i i suppose yeah i was winging it and at the end of the year there was profit 
there might not have been loads of profit, but there was profit and I was just rolling with it. So I thought, oh, it must be somewhere there or there. Do you know what I mean? And just kind of, so that was a really powerful day. And off the back of that day, I spent um, a few hours with my accountant at the time. And I said, look, I need to know my figures. I need to know what I need to be bringing uh, yearly, weekly, monthly. Like I want to know the ins and outs of, of the business. So that was one of the, the really powerful days for me. Um, marketing was another one. Um, utilizing social media and the power of your website at the time I had a, a Wix website which to be fair my designer who did my branding kind of just put the branding together and he just I just wanted to have a presence online more than anything so if anyone looked for me there was like oh there's a website but it, it wasn't great it was just a Wix website and um, so you touched on websites and mine was just pretty much a brochure not even a good one to be fair so I got my web I invested in renewing my website which is hard now that was back then now at the time obviously it takes time for that to build but i'm starting to get loads of inquiries now through that which has been really really a great investment for me um there was a lot of st stuff i learned on the inner circle one of the, the great things i learned from you was the um, non-negotiables like putting time in your diary i never did that i never really used my my diary on my phone so i started actually putting things in whether it was time with the kids or time with my partner or something we were going to do it would go in my diary and i'd be like right that, that that's in it stays there and that was that's I've, in fact to be fair since then i use it all the time my diary now is like and i, I actually i now i've used my diary in a way where i say right tomorrow i've got to get this done this done this done and i put it in my diary so i'm not kind of winging the day so have i, have I done that have i done that otherwise if i don't do it I might do a couple of things and then not do the rest. And then my list builds for the day after. So that was a really, really powerful day, a really powerful day. Um, working on staff, um, rules of the game and letting them know the rules of the game once they, once we employ them and trying to find the right staff. So, so yeah, there was quite, there was a few areas more than just that. They're the ones that spring to mind, the ones that have, have been really powerful for me in my business. Yeah. And, and we can see that now, you know, where you've got to today, Chris, within your business. But just going back to wrap up on, on your inner circle journey, mm -hmm. obviously we do your business evaluation, don't we? So we evaluate yeah. your business on day one and how it's yeah. how it's running as a percentage on day one. And then we do it right at the very end of the inner circle on the final day, the final month, don't we? Yeah. So we, we can see how much your business has grown by as a percentage. Yeah. So over them 12 months, Chris, as a percentage – just share with us how much your business actually grew in them 12 months. 320%. Yeah. 320% yeah. growth in your business yeah. from day one. And a lot of that were down to getting that right mindset, putting the default diaries, the time management in place, getting your marketing strategy right so we can start to generate more profitable leads, understanding the numbers in this business so you can start to make more profit, smartening your team up so you've got the right team coming on board to make you the profit. So just talking about turnover and profit, mm -hmm. you said when you first started to give us some context, you said that you were turning over about 107 grand and your profit margins were 2,200. Yeah. But over that 320% growth within your business, how much is your turnover and how much of your profit margins now increased on in a circle? Uh, turnover has increased by 146% and profit margins has increased by 291%. Yeah. Huge, huge numbers, which is now standing you're in good stead, right? But at this point, we're coming out of the back end of the inner circle. But you had a new idea, didn't you? Yeah. Towards the back end of the inner circle, you had a new idea. We swapped a few WhatsApp messages around it. So yeah. just explain to us what this new idea and this new concept was, because this is sort of like bringing us full circle up to where you are today. Yeah, so what I realized was mindset is such a powerful tool when you understand the power of a positive and a growth mindset. And I remember thinking that it's something really that I wish I'd known a long time ago. I would have made a lot of different decisions in my life had I have done that. So once I'd finished the inner circle, I decided that I wanted to have a positive impact on on, on kids. So I, I then 
it's uh, formed a company called Wolf Instinct Mindset, and the whole purpose of that company was to 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 create a positive and growth mindset in children to, for kids to understand it and to help them work on it so that their journey in life would be a lot better than what our journey in life has been and hopefully have a huge impact on the mental health crisis which is which is now like becoming a pandemic within kids and also a lot more children will definitely become entrepreneurial will probably even make it in sport because the biggest thing holding children back isn't ability in sport it's mindset and this the, because I, because I understand it because I've worked on mine so much now I was like I want to kind of give back and, and and help children so they've got a better start than what I have so so yes I started a business called Wolf Instinct Mindset yeah and I remember you coming up with sort of like the concepts of this and you know you you, you set your branding up didn't you you got your yeah. branding right yeah and then and then just explain to us a little bit how this brand started to unfold then because you got your branding together yeah you set up a facebook group didn't you so just explain, to us, explain to us about why you set the facebook group up so yeah so the whole thing's been, again this has been a journey so i had the idea but i hadn't I, it's kind of grown legs as times went on so the first thing i i, I understand the power of positivity so i set up the facebook group because there was a lot of negativity going on and i was like i'm sick of this like i'm gonna i'm gonna start by just setting up a Facebook group it's easy to do and the whole idea of that was to to share positivity within the group I understand understood the power of, of quotes and 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 and, and, and hearing um, positivity on the morning so I thought I'll put some quotes in there get people to share any wins that they've had or even any challenges that they had and overcome just so people can see that like there's this help out there so that was the idea of the Facebook group I was the that was the first idea that I had was starting the Facebook group that kind of got me started and what i remember you mentioning to me that your daughter had a big involvement in this or, or gave you the inspiration yeah to start to take your mindset to a whole new level so what what would that just share that story with us i think this is quite important yeah so obviously uh, my children were struggling with their mindset more so my daughter um and i was at the time she was like seven so trying to have a conversation with a child at the time I was I was trying to at the time this was all experimental so I was trying to work on my own kids I said right okay how can I speak to them about mindset so I was and, and they were getting it but then then she kind of put it on me massively and she was like all right and so what have you done for your mindset go on then what have you done you know the kids are they're like <laughs> it's all good telling kids and explaining things to kids but they, they learn by example they they learn by seeing what you do and and she's she had me stumped i was like that's that's a great question and really powerful so yeah she, she really put it on me at the time <laughs> yeah so what we are what we are sort of like response to that then challenge accepted <laughs> yeah. i was like do you know i thought you know this is a great question she's got a really good point i couldn't really explain to her that well, I've set up my business. I've went through this. I've went through that. I mean, to be fair, my kids don't know why me and the mom split up. I've never went into it. Like, I wasn't going to go, well, I've overcome this and I've done it. Like, they just wouldn't get it. So I said, right, I'm just going to show them. So they knew that I had a fear of heights. Like, I've never been good with heights. Like, put me on a high scaffold and I go dizzy. So I was like, right, I'm going to, I'm going to conquer my own emotions. I'm going to conquer my own fears and I'm going to, and I'm going to conquer my fear of heights. So that was kind of the first thing I started doing. So I did, a, I went skydiving. I did a 50 meter ab sail. I did, a, I did a, a rock climbing, which to be fair was probably the worst one of everything that I've done. Like I actually felt sick so far up. And, but you know what, you know what was really interesting, Greg? When I was doing the challenges, my emotions would, the fear factor would kick in. And it would, I was like, the, the rock climbing was the worst, like straight it was like, just don't die, just don't die. I was trying to climb up this rock. I was attached to a guy I had like, and I was on a, like this, it was vertical and and I'm like, he'd already went up and I'm like, if I fall here, like all it's stopping me is this guy in a rope. I wasn't attached to the rock, I was just attached to him, but I was like twice his size and I'm thinking if I go, the momentum's taking him. So for the instant, I was like, just don't die, just don't die. And when I did the abseil, when I leant back, I was like, oh my God, I felt physically sick. and 
what I learned doing those challenges was I then I then said, look, what can I control? And I think this is really powerful. I said, what can I control here? I was like, I can't control the height I'm at. All I can control with the abseil was he explained to me to, to lean back and feed the rope through. And on the abseil, all I could on the rock climb, all I could concentrate on was put my hands in any little cracks in my feet. So literally my whole mindset went to focusing on those things. And with the abseil, I didn't know how, because I wasn't thinking about it, I didn't actually know how high I was. I could have been 50 meters, I could have been two meters. The fear had gone because my mindset was, right, just focus on what you can't control. Did the same with the rock climbing. Um, so I then learned how to conquer my fear of the heights was basically to, because fear is obviously trying to stop you from being in a situation you haven't been in before and and if you just stop thinking about it and don't worry about it and just concentrate on what you can't control then the fear has gone and that was really powerful that was a really powerful experience do you know what there's a there's an acronym for fear and that is false expectations appearing real that's all fear mm -hmm. is, isn't it? Yeah. It's false expectations appearing real that you're conjuring things up in your own mindset, in your own subconscious, that what if this happens and what if that happens? Mm -hmm. And it's the fear of the unknown, isn't it? It is. It's fear of the unknown. It is. And, and, and like I say this to my kids a lot, like my kids, if they haven't done anything, like to be fair, I think it's not just kids. I think people in general, if they haven't done something before, there is a little bit of anxiety or a bit of nervousness because you're trying to anticipate how it's going to play out. And usually you'll think worst case scenario. Like I said to my daughter a little while back, I was like, uh, she was on about um, being on stage. I was like, if you had to go on stage and, and speak in front of a thousand people, what would the first thing that like, you would think? She'd say, oh, I'll be so nervous. What if I messed up? What if I did this and what if I did that? So she's thinking worst case, it's, it, it's a thing that we do. And I was like, why not get up there and think, Oh, I'm going to smash this. Everyone's going to love me. Like I'm going to do so well. It's just because we don't think that do it. Like we're, we're just naturally think of the worst case, which then puts us in a state of fear. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, look, you know, this fear conquering your fear to prove to your daughter that you can overcome these fears. Yeah. You did the skydiving, you did the abseiling yeah. and you did the rock climbing, but it didn't stop there, did it? No, no, obviously not many people really want to be in caves because they're so tight and, and, and I'm not claustrophobic, but th this is claustrophobic and there's not being claustrophobic and there's being in a cave. So I got offered the challenge to go in a cave and I was like, right, I'm going to take it. That was really, that was, that was a really interesting experience because some of the things I had to go through were literally the size of me and they were like tunnels. So I'm crawling through like arms like that. It's the size of me. And all I could do is shuffle inch, inch by inch. And again, that fear of I'm going to suffocate because you can feel yourself like struggling to breathe. But again, it was just saying, right, just, just, just control what you can control. So I went caving. Um, I also, I also, I then started chasing the challenge basically. So I was like, right, what can I challenge myself with next? Um, so I did my first ultra marathon. Uh, I went down that route. Um, at the time, uh, just, uh, yeah, just after that, I then I was 17 stone, 17 and a half stone. And I was like, look, I'm really out of shape physically. I need to get myself. So my next challenge is I need to lose that weight. I need, I want, my challenge was to get the fittest I've ever been, like ever. So I then started doing three or four hit classes a week, strict diet. And, and I lost, and I lost, I ended up losing like two, two and a half stone. I think I'm 14 and a half stone now. Um, and then the next thing was, right, what do I not like doing? Okay, I don't like running. So I, I hired an ultra running coach and I'm now training to do ultra runs and, and, and fell running and trail running. And, and I don't enjoy it. Um, when you're out there, it's nice to be out there. The challenge is good. When you complete it, it's good. But the training's not good. The training's hard. So it's not something I enjoy doing every day, but it's a challenge. So, so yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been one thing after another. I'm constantly trying to find the next challenge. Yeah. Well, I, I know on top of that as well, you did Lone Survivor. You've stopped yeah, smoking. Survivor. You stopped drinking alcohol. Yeah, I think I'm in 15 or 16 months without any alcohol. Yeah. And all this <laughs> to prove to your daughter that you can do it. So yeah. you've done this. You're proving to your daughter that you can do it. So how does the story unfold from here? How do we get to the point where you set up a brand, you set up a Facebook group, you're proving to your daughter that you've got this bulletproof mindset that you can achieve anything. What happened next? How did we get onto the books? Yeah. So the books, so because my daughter was a bit younger, 
I was trying to figure out how I could kind of get into her mindset and for her to see how to react to situations in a positive way without me blabbing on about it, basically. And uh, I was sitting actually with the lads at work one day and we were talking and then we got on about, one of the lads was, was, was into writing and we got on about books and then I was like, a book? A children's book? Like reading a book so she can see characters handling situations that children are going to go through but handle them in a positive way i was like so i actually looked for a book and i couldn't find one so i was like right, i'll write one then because <laughs> i didn't have enough to do at the time so i decided to, to to write a book basically that i could that i could share with my kids and and so that's how the book originally started it was because i was trying to see how i could get into a a, a child's head and, and and teach them about mindset, but in a non-intrusive way, because you don't you don't want to be intrusive. And I thought kids kind of learn from characters and they can say it, they'll sink into their mindset. Oh, I remember this situation happening in that book. Oh, that's how I can handle that. So that's that's where the book started. Yeah. So listen, I, as someone who's not very good at reading and writing, right? How the hell do you start to write a book? Where where do you <laughs> even start? Well. This is the thought process I had at the time. And to be fair, this kind of grew a leg. So what I started doing was I was like, right, okay, like what what kind of situations do children go through? So that's where I kind of started. So I gave myself a basis of, of a story. So I started thinking of situations kids will go through at school. So I wrote down a few. And then I was thinking, right, the characters, like where do I start with the characters? And then and then because of the because of the because I'd already started the business or the brand of Wolf Instinct, I was like, have you created a link it back to the wolves? So then I thought, well, children aren't just going to decide to to handle the situation in a positive way because they don't understand it. So they're going to be thinking what normal children think, and it's it's like, how do I handle this? I start thinking negatively. So I thought, well, if they had a pet wolf, pet wolf was the original idea. If I had a pet wolf, then the pet wolf could be the the mentor, the guide that can guide them and it can just like help them. And then it went from a pet wolf to then a, a spirit wolf. And and, 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 and as to, cause I was really busy with my construction business and everything else, sometimes on a nighttime in between things, I'd have ideas, I'd write it down, but sometimes Craig, like when I'm just, my mind doesn't switch off, you're probably the same. And I could be driving somewhere and my brain's just in the background thinking all of a sudden it'll go bang. And I'll be, oh, that's a great idea. It'll just come from nowhere. So I'll make a note of it. And then it just materialized from that. And before I knew it, I'd actually form myself the basis of a story. I'd then create characters. And originally I was going to do loads of short stories. So I'd made a book about one child and then another. And then when I spoke to a publisher and I randomly came across a publisher through a, through a, a contact and I spoke to them, they were like, it'll cost you a fortune to do it as individual books. So why don't you do it as a chapter book and put them all together? So then I had to figure out how to incorporate the children. I, I wanted it to be diversified. So I didn't want it to be like one kind of minority. So I wanted like a little bit of a different background. So I was like, right, okay, how do I get five kids from five different backgrounds all with a spirit wolf? So then then that that was probably my stumbling block for a little while was how I did it. But I came up with a, with an idea, which if you, I don't know if you've read the book, but if you read the book, you'll see how I've managed to do that. But yeah, it was just mad. It just, this thing just started snowballing, but my brain was always thinking, my mind was always thinking about it. It was always there in between things. And just now and then these little ideas would just come from somewhere and I'd write it down. And then and before I knew it, eventually I'd, I'd kind of created this book. So then I just had to kind of write the stories and then figure out how I wanted to get my point across. It literally escalated to be fair. <laughs> you no, know, I, I mean, it's amazing to hear this because I mean, uh, and remember the, the narrative behind all this and the reasoning behind it is one to help and show your daughter the right mm -hmm. way and the right path. But two, to, like you've just alluded to earlier, to help that younger generation deal with their emotions and deal with the mindset as they come into adulthood mm -hmm. so that we can make that shift and change in people's mindsets earlier on in, in the lives. And I find, I, honestly, I find this astonishing. So moving on from writing the book, how did you get it published then? Because... You, you know, you, you, nobody's just come up to you and give you 50 grand and said, go and write a book. You've self-financed and self-done this yeah. all yourself, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I did it myself. So the company that I got to speak to, they're, they're a fantastic company. And um, when I spoke to the lady who owns that, Estelle, I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a joiner by trade. I've got a construction company. I've got this book. I've, I've pretty much wrote out the stories 
I just wanted to speak to you to see what 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 the hell do I do? <laughs> like, I don't know what I do. And she's, she was great. She said, look, the way we operate is you pay us a fee to do whatever you want us to do so we can edit it, we can do the illustrations for you, we can pull it all together, you give us a story, and then we'll make it into a book. And that comes with with, with the cost of, of X. And I was like, right, okay. They didn't take any royalties. Obviously, I didn't do it going down the route of um, publishing it through a company did royalties and they marketed it and then they'd pay for it. Like, literally, I paid for the book myself, so I had to pay for the book. So I spent all the time doing the book and then I had to pay for the book as well. So so that was pretty much, yeah, it was a self a self finance published book through, but through a, pro, a, a proper publishing company. So they did the illustrations and stuff for me, yeah. And do you want to share what the book's called? Yeah, so it's called Tales of uh, Hidden Strength. The actual, the title is uh, Whispers of the Wolf Within. All the books are called that, and then they've all got their own titles. So I've got Tales of Hidden Strength is the first book which I brought out. But then I went on and obviously brought out the second book, which is called Tales of Self-Belief. And basically the idea is, so it's got, so, so I've had to pay for the book twice now, <laughs> double cost. And I must be mad because I, I want to bring out a full series. So the whole idea is, is, to understand the story, you'll have to read it in, in order. So you'll have to read Hidden Strength, then Self-Belief, and then so on and so forth. And I've probably got about five, maybe six books I can bring because literally you can. You, we're going to follow the journey of the characters in the books. So the story follows on. So it's like a year. It's like their year at school. And then they go into the next year. And it's like things they've, they've achieved, things they've overcome. And and yes, yeah, so I've got I've got another another at least probably three or four books I'm going to have to self finance sometime in the near future. <laughs> but, I mean that, that that's amazing, isn't it? To come up with you know, and again, the messaging behind all this is the reason why you set up your business in the first place is because you wanted to have shared custody of your children. The reason yeah. why you got into pushing yourself for your mindset and development and taking it to a whole new level with your daughter and to help your daughter. So yep. behind all this, there is that message behind it all. But the fact that you got one book out, success, you've got the next book, and now you're going to follow their journeys as they're getting older. And I take it they're going to have different challenges. You know, as they're coming into teenage years, they're going to have different challenges that they're going to have to deal with. So is that how you see the trilogy of the books unfolding? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm trying to touch on as many challenges as I can the children will face when they're younger. Um, and in 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 this in this in each book, the uh, the children can read how the, how those characters deal with them in a positive way, how they overcome them. I mean, it's not all like sunshine and rainbows. It's not like they've conquered everything. Like they are having difficult moments, but they just the per so the persevere. The, the characters in the book will persevere, and then eventually. They'll overcome that hurdle. So it's just kind of getting kids. Because like, life's not easy as an adult. Life's not easy as a kid. But if you just persevere and you be resilient, eventually you'll get to where you want to be. And that's kind of the message that I want to get across is, is for kids to look at. I think one of the most positive things that I say to my kids is, is having positive thoughts and positive self-talk. And I say that to them a lot. And I say, look, you've got to think positively in, in all situations and think positively about yourself and positive self-talk. Even if something is like, even if you've got this massive challenge, like don't let it overcome you. Because if we think positively, and I've learned this, and I'm constantly having positive thoughts, even when I'm in my worst moment, then I can overcome them. If I'm thinking negatively, not only do I not overcome them, but then obviously your thoughts affect your emotions. And that's where like your depression comes in and anxiety and stuff like that. So, so yeah, it's just trying to get the positive message across as best I can in in the books, and so that all children can read them. And the, the feedback I've had is they're very relatable. The characters are very relatable. The stories are very relatable. I've even had parents um, contact me and say they've. I mean, obviously the four children, but the message is for anyone saying that they've took a lot from the books, which I found really powerful as well. So, yeah, incredible. So, yeah, it's been a it's been a yeah it's 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 yeah it has been incredible to think they both got a number one as well when the whole idea was just me trying to help my daughter and then yeah <laughs> yeah massive well done chris honestly uh, inspiring but it doesn't, it doesn't finish there though does it because <laughs> of the success of the back of the books you've now started doing the outdoor challenges so do you just want to share a little bit about the outdoor challenges and the workbooks mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically the outdoor challenge, because obviously I, I've done a lot of outdoor challenges and I see the power in them. 
because when you're challenging yourself, you've got to learn to persevere. You've got to be resilient. You've got to embrace the challenge. You've got to think positively. Like there's so many aspects to challenging yourself, which helps your mindset that I thought, you know what it is? This is where the power is for me. This is where I'm getting the power. This is where I'm creating the stronger mindset. It's all good reading books and stuff like that. But it's like, and this is going to sound a bit extreme, but like the army don't train the SAS in on Zoom or in an office. They put them out in the field and they've got to deal with these emotions that they're going to, they're going to come across when they're out in the field. So it's the same with your mindset. I, I, there's so much power in doing stuff and challenging yourself in the outdoors. And plus being in the outdoors, kids don't, aren't really in the outdoors anymore. So just being out there is really good for their mental health. So I decided to create outdoor challenges for, for children. But I didn't want the challenges just just to be the turning up and doing like an assault course or a zip line or or a leap of faith. Like, yeah, I wanted them to do them, but I had to get the message across about about mindset. And so what I've done is I've created a workbook and I don't want to be too intrusive and it doesn't take much time. So before they go out there, the workbook explains what a positive mindset is, what a fixed mindset is, gives them the basis of a mindset, and explains what's happening, going to happen on the day and how that's going to correlate to, to mindset and, and everyday life. And then I ask them how they're feeling before they're going to do the challenges. And then at the end, we'll come back and then we'll go through how they felt after they overcome the challenges. And I've run two events now and the, the feedback's been incredible. And what was really interesting about the the outdoor challenges was I had a range of kids from eight to 15. And I thought the younger ones would be the ones that were actually going to struggle. But what I found was the younger ones were scared because, I mean, one of the things was climbing up like a, a pole and then having to stand on the top and jump off, like literally just jump off. So they were scared because there was a lot of height and there was a lot. Of, I mean, the challenges were really good, actually, and, and everyone was scared. But the younger kids, they were the ones that were like, I'm scared, but I'm going to do it. I'm scared, but I'm, I want to go first. And and as you went through the ages, it was really an interesting um, – because the, the ones I've done, I did because I wanted to try and get some feedback from it and understand how the day would run properly. And, and as soon as you got out of primary school and into high school and the further into high school you got, the more conditioned they were. And by the time you got to the older ages, it was like, no, nah, I can't do it. I can't do that and I'm not doing it. Like literally mindset fixed. There was no budge of them. To be honest, I did manage to get them to do, to do the challenges. Not all, but most. But... It was hard work trying to 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 speak to them about it and 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 see why they were getting in the wrong way basically. But and it was really interesting. So what I've realised is if we can help kids, especially at a at a at a younger age, and get the positive mindset into them, I'm hoping by the time they get to high school, they'll not get that point of having a fixed mindset and being conditioned because they're, they're so used to understanding what a positive mindset is. And it was a really interesting um, couple of days to be honest. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I mean, wow, when I started off at the beginning of this episode saying, you know, you've achieved a lot in two years. Remember, this is all in two years. We can start to see now what, what's happening. Yeah. So let's bring it back to your business into present day then, Chris. Yeah. So you've, you've, you know, you've been in a circle, you've shared the growth that you've had, but where are you now in your business? Because your focus has been taken away slightly mm -hmm. towards wolf instincts, but at the same time, you've still maintained and grown your business. So where are you at now? Yeah, so at the minute, um, business is, is really well, doing really well. Inquiries are coming in thick and fast. Um, we're actually struggling to keep on, on top of the inquiries, so that's really good. I'm getting a lot from my website. Um, I'm getting a lot. I'm even getting people contacting me now and I'm not actually tendering against anybody. People are just contacting me and asking me just to give them a price. They want to work with me, um, which is really interesting because I've never really had that before. You usually tend to negate somebody and some of these are big projects. So that's been, been strange, but fascinating, but really, really good. It obviously it's it's saying a lot about the marketing that I've been doing and that people trust me as a person and as a business that that much that they just want to work with me. So so yeah, so it's growing. Um, I'm looking to expand and take on some more stuff in the coming weeks. And over the from 2017 to to this year's turnover and profit that had grown. Turnover had grown by 229 percent and profit margins from 2017's 1390 percent 
So, so it has, it is grown. It has grown. I'm not going to lie. I'm spinning a lot of plates, writing books and, and, and focusing on stuff for the children. Cause I'm now at the minute, I'm trying to get into schools with the stuff for the kids. Um, to, cause I think that might be my, my, that might be the route that has the most impact because obviously I'm just having to deal with schools there. And, and that, that is one thing I want to do is have a, is a big an impact on children as I can. So I have my, have my, I am spinning a lot of plates and I'm doing a lot of personal development, but I'm not letting one kind of overshadow the other. I'm utilizing my time wisely. And like someone said to me, how do you manage to do everything that you do and I was just like well there's 24 hours in a day I just use as many of them as I can without burning myself out um so yeah so it's it's yeah everything everything at the minute is is going well but it does I do still have challenges my building company is doing really well but it doesn't mean I don't have challenges well if instinct has challenges because I'm trying to get it out there it's a new concept but but it's it's all moving forward and it's all moving in the right direction so so yeah everything's looking really good at the minute yeah well, Chris, listen, massive, massive well done on what you've achieved. I mean, Thank two you. years is remarkable to have done what you've done. And hopefully you will have inspired other people that are maybe got that fixed mindset. Maybe they've fallen out of love with the business. Like I said, that I, what had happened to me and that you've inspired them to think, well, hang on a minute, if Chris can achieve all this lot from a standing start within two years, what's their excuses? So Chris, just in wrapping, have you got any sort of like final thoughts or any advice to anyone that is struggling with a mindset or is in a bad place in the business or within the life now? What advice would you give them? I mean, depending on where they are, I think I think if there's one part of your business that you're struggling with, then I think the, pow the power there is finding somebody who knows what you need to know. So I know if there's something I'm not too sure on in my business, and it's stressing me out, I'll reach out to, to somebody and, and find out and find the answer. Um, but I think probably what I've learned a lot in my business is, is, is that there's never problems. There's always, there's only situations. And I always say this to myself and I always say, how can I turn this situation into a possibility? And, and, and I always look for the positives in it. There's always a positive. There's always a flip through it in a, in a bad moment or a bad situation, in a negative moment, there'll be a positive there. And I always try and find that positive. And I literally look at everything with positivity, even the the hardest challenges I get. I'm like, right, okay, there'll be a solution. What's the solution and how can I turn this into a positive? Because at the end of the day, if there's something you're struggling on, you'll be able to overcome it. And, and when you overcome it, you'll grow as a person. So I would just say, just keep going. And if it's something you're struggling with in your business that you don't understand, then reach out. I mean, I reached out to you for the inner circle to help me understand my business more. Now, obviously, I've got my accountant and I reach out to her for my, my finances. I don't know like about finances, so I still speak to her about stuff like that. And it's just, just there's always somebody out there who knows what you need to know. So if you're struggling about one aspect of your business, reach out and just always, always look at everything in a positive state of mind. Yeah, yeah, good advice, Chris. And Chris, you know, for anybody that is wanting to sort like maybe reach out to you, whether, whether that is about business a mindset and that help and support or yep. whether it's somebody who's watching or listening to this and saying, do you know what I could do? We getting my hands on, on those books. One for, one for my kids or my grandkids or two for me myself. Yep. So what's the best way of people being able to contact you, Chris? So if people want to contact me directly, um, I'm on Facebook and um, people can, can connect with me. People can follow me on there. And if anyone's struggling with anything, I'm happy to speak to them. With regards to the stuff with Wolf Instinct, there is a Facebook um, page on there at Wolf Instinct Mindset where I post everything about the books and the outdoor challenges and anything that's to do with that business is on there. So if you want to reach out to me via Wolf Instinct for that business or if you want to get me con contact me directly, then just reach out to me on, on Facebook's my main platform. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And what we'll do is we'll link up your Facebook group and the links to the books inside the show notes to this episode should anybody want to reach out to you and get them books yeah. so Chris, cool. massive massive thank you for coming on and sharing what you've achieved over this last two years i know for sure it'll have inspired other people but thanks very much and i'll catch thank you, you for having me thank you craig have a great day cheers 
Well, what an inspiring journey Chris has been on over the last two years in his business. He's clearly overcome some big challenges and some big obstacles in his business and life. And it just goes to prove that investing into yourself and into your own mindset and personal development can generate huge positive results in your life and in your business. Now, the doors have now opened for you to apply to join our next inner circle. This is my 12 month marketing and business coaching program that Chris has now completed. And if you're interested in taking a similar journey to Chris and you're serious about growing and scaling your business, please consider hitting the link within the show notes of this episode and go and check out what's involved in applying for our inner circle. And remember, the results that you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. I'll see you next week.